Okay, so by Newton's second law, the y component of the force is equal to this expression, and of course ma is the same thing as the uh, derivative, the time derivative of the uh, y component of the momentum, which is a, also equal to m dvy dt. Now, so m dvy dt is equal to this expression. Let's bring this d phi dt onto the, uh, over to the other side okay, of the equation. And this gives us, <coughs> excuse me, dvy uh, dt. And also we can, um, we'll divide by m uh, times, oops, times dt phi. Uh, this is equal to little z, big Z, e squared, sine of phi, okay, from up there, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, b, v sub 0, m, brought the m to that side, and now we notice that um, uh, those cancel, and so this is equal to dvy d phi. So this gives us an expression, <coughs> excuse me, that relates the velocity, the time rate of change of velocity, the y component of the velocity, um, not the time rate of change, the, um, the, the, it relates the uh, change in the y component of velocity to the change in the angle phi um, uh, and as a function of these parameters here. Okay. Now if we integrate this expression uh, over phi, okay, then we'll get uh, a relationship between the velocity vy as a function of phi. Okay, And so if we do that, we find that it's a simple integral. It's just the integral basically of sine of phi, which is minus cosine of phi. So we find that vy is equal to um, minus little z big z e squared and now cosine of phi. Um, I'll put that here, cosine of phi, okay, over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, bv sub 0 m, bv sub 0 m and then plus an integration constant c. But we also realize that um, that uh, when when uh, theta, this is of course is a function of, oh sorry, not theta, this is a function of phi. When phi is zero, then cosine of uh, phi is one, and that tells you that the constant c, uh, and this, uh, sorry, um, the initial y component is, is zero, right? Because when it's when you're talking about uh, very far away, the initial y component is zero, uh, and cosine uh, phi is basically zero, and so cosine of phi is equal to one. And so what this means is that uh, this is equal to zero, and so um, c is equal to plus little z big z e squared without the cosine divided by 4 pi epsilon naught b v sub 0 m. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So after all, we have that um, <coughs> vy, which is a function of phi, is equal to uh, little z big z e squared divided by 4 pi epsilon naught b v sub 0 m times 1 minus the cosine of phi. Okay, and this is true for phi uh, less than or equal to pi minus theta and greater than or equal to 0. So phi will never be bigger than a pi minus theta.